What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we are back in the kitchen yet again for another WWE horror action figure setup. So today we are back in my damn kitchen for another WWE horror action figure setup. Man, you guys know we really enjoy these on the channel. They're a lot of fun to set up. We love to get into it for the month of October. So we're back yet again, man. Let's dive in. Buckle the hell up, man. Let's go ahead and dive into our WWE horror action figure setup back again inside the my damn kitchen. So I guess we'll start off in the corner and then we'll go all the way around here. We'll finish up this portion and then we'll come to the other side where the sink and stuff is. All right, man. So starting off in our corner over here, we do have Angelo Dawkins stuck inside the blender. You guys can see there he's yelling to get out and everything like that and we do have this 2009 friday the 13th remake or you know that edition of the movie this is i think from the beginning portion of the movie before he finds his mask we have this rap head jason sort of here he's got like you know that that jason was all in the woods and kind of living off the land there and today he has angelo dawkins locked up inside of the blender and he doesn't look like he's getting out of there so you know you got a blender it kind of just fits itself in there in the horror action figure setup so we did start off our edition with jason Jason and Angelo Dawkins. This one right here is pretty interesting, and I think it's pretty relevant, especially on the day that we're talking about this. But we do have Logan Paul here, and he is strung up like a Christmas tree, man. Look at this right here. He is strung up. He's got barbed wire wrapped all around the man. The blood is all over his face so far. And he is chained completely up all the way up here, held on by the beef ravioli. Not sponsored, but, you know, go buy some, man. It's pretty damn good. But the beef ravioli, the Chef Boyardee or Chef Boyardee, how do you pronounce it? The Chef Boyardee beef ravioli holding up Logan Paul strung up here. It only made sense that this heavy can would be effective in the setup here. But Logan Paul's getting strung up here. And then you have Michael Myers with this nailed 2x4, the 2x4 full of nails. We have the Ultimate Miner here from My Bloody Valentine. And then we have Ghostface here with the knife. I mean, I think he's in a no-win situation, but this is a lot of fun to set up right there. You know, you can get creative with the different figures and the chains and the barbed wire and the yelling Logan Paul. So... Yeah, tell me who you got down below in the fight with, you know, Dylan Dennis and, and Logan Paul. If we come forward just a little bit, guys, we do have another remake Jason here, but he's strangling Jungle Boy. So Jungle Boy is fighting for his life in this pot of water. You know, years in the past, things in the past, we have had the guys, you know, putting him in boiling water and like shoving their head in the boiling water. But this time it is not even on yet. It's just a pot of regular water and he's trying to pull him in there. You guys know that Jason drowned in a lake, so he's trying to get Jungle Boy to feel his wrath here in this setup. This one's a bit interesting. We have another drowning, but this time it is in the sauce, man. This is uh, a cup of sauce, and Jericho is getting taken to school by Jason Voorhees here. So he's got him held under the sauce right there. Wanted to have his head, like, out of it, like, yelling with the sauce all over it, but he's just got his head dunked in there. So, you know, I, I don't plan on taking a bite of that, but, uh, yeah, that sauce is now ruined. We come forward a little bit. We have somebody attempting to choke. We have Triple H going one on one with Michael Myers, choking out here on the stovetop. You know, Triple H is fighting for his life right there. I think last time he was strapped down, so in this one he is fighting back a little bit there. He's not completely just out of his wits. You know, he's got a fighting chance here, so we gave Triple H a chance here on the stovetop for this specific setup. To the left a little bit, we do have a pretty creative one. You guys know that Hellraiser or Pinhead right here is all about pain and suffering. So he has this gigantic can of salt or this salt shaker, and he is pouring it on the open wounds of the CM Punk. CM Punk down here, he's bloody mess. He's got a lot of open wounds. He's got barbed wire wrapped around him, and then Pinhead is pouring that salt on the open wounds. Anybody that has a cut, you know, you go in the ocean, or you get some sort of salt on it, or you get something that makes it sting, man. It's really painful, so, you know, he's kind of rubbing the salt in the wounds, if you will, making it a whole lot worse. Coming to the left right here, you guys know that Brock Lesnar is always fighting back in our setup. So in this one, he has removed the head of this Part 3 Jason. Now, this Part 3 Jason is holding this harpoon gun. And so I take it that he was holding out the harpoon gun, pointing at Brock Lesnar, and he just gave him a vicious uppercut and sent Jason's head flying off right there, which wouldn't be the first time that's happened to Jason. It happened in Part 8 as well, but Jason was doing it to somebody else. Instead of uh, here in the setup, it is vice versa. Coming just beyond that, man, we have probably my favorite part of the setup. We have this second form Frieza figure. This is the SH figure second form Frieza. Now, I was going to have somebody over the top, but my Dremel piece that I use to like put the hole through them and have like the horn going through there. If you guys watch the anime, you know what I'm talking about. That did not work out for this specific setup. However, we do have Wheeler Yuta getting his head crushed by the Frieza foot right there. So he's yelling in agony. His head's starting to squish. He's got the blood coming out right there. And then we have a part five Jason and another Rollins over here 
that just got completely decimated by Frieza. And while he is squishing Yuta and taking out multiple members here in the setup, he is key blasting, and he key blasted Roman Reigns into the Gushers box, for Christ's sake, knocking it over, spilling Gushers everywhere. So Roman Reigns went flying the Tribal Chief, and he's kind of in midair, kind of colliding with the box. And then you do have this, like, key blast from Frieza. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, the sky's the limit when you get into, you know, horror action figures mixing it with DBZ, stuff like that. You get some villains and some creativity. Thought about doing a Marvel Legends setup before, you know. We may get into it, but uh, this was a lot of fun to set up. You have second form Frieza just kind of going crazy. And he's such a big guy and big girthy figure that it's fun to set up here and uh, pose him around with the wrestling and horror action figures. You know, just beyond that, you will see Danhausen here. Now, this Dragon Ball was just kind of laying around, and I thought it would be funny to have him holding the Dragon Ball, and then he's just kind of like freaking out because Frieza has opened up a can of whoop -A on everybody, and I thought it would be funny. So there's there's uh, Danhausen with a Dragon Ball. Again, it was just kind of laying around, so I figured it would go well in the setup. We come just beyond that. Moving on down, we do have Leatherface. Now, he does have John Moxley strapped to the table here. And if you guys look closely, he has been sawn in half. By God, that man is broken in half. He has been sawed in half by Leatherface. Leatherface is right here. He's got his chainsaw crunk up. He's got him attached to the table. I mean, this is no worse situation than you want to be in, but this Blood and Guts John Moxley figure fits perfect right here, and I think it looks really good with the Leatherface. He's got his chainsaw. Moxley is screaming for his life. I mean, it looks good here, and it looks like an operation table or something like that that Leatherface would have down in his workshop, so I think it all works good here, but I like this part of the setup. I think it looks nice, and you do have, you know, the, the, the cut in half right there. That's a great bonus feature of the AEW figures, especially for these horror action figure setups. I mean, just beyond Leatherface, guys, we do have a bunch of crazy body parts and members laid out because this gigantic T-Rex has been wrecking havoc. Now, this was actually a new addition. My brother had the idea of it. My son, I got him this, I think, a, a year ago, and it's a gigantic T-Rex that I think scales pretty decent. I mean, it's not perfect scale, but it absolutely works here. You guys can see the Ultimate Edition Batista in the mouth there getting crushed by the giant T-Rex. I can't even remember the name of this T-Rex, but Stone Cold Steve Austin's the only one kind of fighting back here. He's on top of it trying to take him out and, you know, try, trying his best to fight off the giant T-Rex. But to no avail, he has taken out multiple members, bit this guy in half. Sami Zayn's laid out Diesel's arm and head has just been missing. So this uh, T-Rex has been wrecking havoc, and I thought it was pretty cool right there. I think this is one of maybe three dinosaurs that we own that are big like this, but uh, this was the biggest one. It's like a, it's a really nice piece. I picked that up at Target. Go grab one if you can find it. Beyond our T-Rex, we have this one right here. Now, this one was pretty unique. You have Pennywise right here. Wave into the crowd. Say hello to the, to the crowd right there. As he has shoved over another can of Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee, I mean, these cans are doing some damage in this setup. You guys can see that it has crushed Goldberg underneath here, pinning him down on this table there. And you guys can see the area that it has been crushed there. So if you compare the weight of the can with the figures and everything like that. I mean, they scale well for a nice, huge weight. We used it last setup to crush the rock figure, and now here they are represented multiple times here in the setup. So the cans can do a lot of damage. I mean, a, a can can do a lot of damage to just a regular person. So to the figures themselves, it must be their kryptonite, but there's Pennywise uh, showing off his little contraption that he has built here for our WWE horror action figure setup. Now looking at it from this angle over here, you guys can see the other side of the Goldberg there. And then coming down over here, we have another portion. You have Chucky pushing the cinder block off of this table. And Tiffany is holding down Dustin, who is screaming with his head rested against another cinder block. So you guys can kind of see the direction they're going in there. Tiffany doing her best to hold place Dustin Rhodes. And then Chucky trying to get his work in as well, right in front of the T-Rex. So the T-Rex, that's another cool shot of Austin riding. And then you do have the T-Rex and the Batista and everything. And then we come down here. This is where the Chucky and Tiffany portion of the setup is. Coming just beyond that, we do have Freddy Krueger here. Now this is pretty interesting. You have this on fire trash can this closable trash can and then you have freddy kind of like setting it on fire so you can kind of envision there's probably somebody in the trash can i didn't have anybody in mind but you can use the imagination i think it works great for freddy krueger there still couldn't find his hat so he does have like his brain exposed and stuff but you know freddy krueger is uh, getting it done here today with his trash can he's burning trash but uh i don't think that's uh trash right there brad just beyond that, we do have the Candyman set up right here. Last time, I think he was doing war with Cody Rhodes. This time, 
he is taking out MJF. So MJF is crawling away, and he's screaming, and he's like, Jesus, help me. But he's a little bit battle damaged. He's been through a war already, so he's, you know, he's trying to crawl away and get away. But uh, the Candyman is uh, coming after him over here with his hook hand. Really nice figure right here. You know, not the most posable, but still a really quality figure. Bendy wire and the cape and stuff, so you have it kind of blowing back with the wind. You got the fire blowing back, you know, uh, and MJF, MJF crawling away here. So there is Candyman's portion of our setup. I don't know what the hell this shopping cart's doing here. After that, we also have this portion, which is Kenny Omega with this machete. Him and Braun Strowman have taken out this giant Jason right here. So what I have is Braun Strowman must have given him a, a good old classic tabletop. If anybody's ever heard of a tabletop, it's where your friend would go up behind a person you were talking to, and then they would shove that person, and then they would like fall backwards because they get tabletop. That's what that was called. So Jason has been tabletop by Braun Strowman. And when he fell, he fell on this gigantic knife, and it has beheaded him. So Braun Strowman and Kenny Omega have kind of tripped up and tabletopped this Jason to fall onto this knife. And the knife has uh, beheaded the Jason here. You guys can see the pull of blood underneath the Jason head here. This figure is really awesome. It's pretty much our part for Jason that is like lower scale. It's just a bigger version. This figure is massive and gigantic. Wish we got more figures like that, but this is a really cool part as well. You got, you know, Celebration Kenny here with the machete over his head. But I have found this part to be pretty intriguing about the setup. Over here is pretty interesting, man. Look at this Ortiz right here yelling. He's trying to use a donut to shield himself, but the donut has paid the cost. I mean, not a great shield to use, to be honest with you, but a delicious one at that. As this Jason is trying to come after Ortiz, he's using the donut as a shield, and it is obviously cutting right through it there, destroying the donut and probably destroying Ortiz in the process. But right now, he's protected by the delicious donut. We come on this side of the setup, we do have this Jason Voorhees slamming AJ Styles' head into the microwave. I thought that was pretty clever there. So he is getting destroyed by the microwave by Jason Voorhees. This is on the opposite side of the, of the kitchen here. But these two Jasons are also prepared for somebody up above. And that is going to be RVD jumping out of the cabinet, coming and crashing down onto the Jason figure. So we'll go ahead and get that done right now. Yeah, that didn't do... A damn thing. Sorry about that, bud. Now we come over here, we do have a couple Pennywises. Now this Pennywise coming out of the garbage disposal, and then we have this Kurt Angle using the water gun to shoot at the Pennywises. So originally he was over here, but it wouldn't reach, so he was shooting at this one coming out, and kind of like his leg is off, his arm is off, so he's kind of curling up out of the garbage disposal, out of the sewer, if you will, and then you also have this Pennywise over here who is like, re you know, like regenerating, coming after Kurt, and Kurt is uh, pretty terrified, so he's trying to use his water gun there to protect himself as much as possible, but then we have Seth Rollins here who was in the wheelchair and he got pushed off this little cliff into the sink by one of these Jason figures over here. So he got uh, plummeted down in there and hit his head on there. Uh, probably unconscious at this point. But these two Jason figures right here are also looking out for Jeff Hardy who is jumping out of this cabinet, which I think looks pretty unique right here because it's kind of like a skinny cabinet. But uh, he's coming down onto these. And given what happened with RVD over there, I don't know if this will actually work, but let's go and see. Let's, get, let's see if he can take out these Jasons. Okay, so he was actually successful. So is what you know. But over here, we do have Doink the Clown taking out another Pennywise figure. As you guys can see, Pennywise or Doink right here. And he used the top of this candy jar to take out this Pennywise. So he crushed the head of the Pennywise there, surviving him. But, uh, you know, he looks a little bit, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe his face. Kind of like a mischievous face, like, hi, I gotcha. And then he's got his hammer there to protect himself as well, if any more do show up. After these Jasons get taken out by Jeff Hardy... Over here, you have this batch of weapons just chilling, and then we have this gigantic bag of sugar, and Cody Rhodes is getting buried alive in the sugar here, and he looks like he is enjoying every single bit of that, and that is not just a head sculpt, man. That is a full upper body. I thought about it after I buried the figure. Damn, could have just took his head off and set it on top of the sugar and got the same effect, but I'm an idiot. But here we go. We have Sam right here burying him alive from Trick or Treat. So Sam does have his shovel full of sugar, and it's spilled over over there. And I thought that was pretty fun and unique. So he's using this Tupperware to uh, bury Cody Rhodes alive with the with the shovel right there. So he's got a shovel full of sugar. He's got all his good stuff going on. And yeah, this is I, I, this is possibly my favorite part of the setup. But I don't know. I also want you guys to chime in down in the comment section below what your favorite part of the setup is right now.
But I do believe that is our full entire WWE horror action figure setup this go around, man. Had a lot of fun with this one. I'd like to know down in the comment section on a few different things. I want to know what your favorite part of the setup is. Also, if this part, if, is this kitchen setup better than our previous kitchen setup that was posted last weekend? I think every single Saturday we're going to be posting up a new horror action figure setup for the month of October. And we may have also a battle royal and some other things planned as we go along, man. I want to do a Halloween night special and things, so we will see about all those things. But that's that is pretty much going to wrap up the Horde WWE action figure setup, man. Again, leave me your thoughts down in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video and give me your favorite part of the setup down below. Huge shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate those guys for all of their continued support. If you guys are interested in that, click the link in the description below. Always a huge shout out to those guys. Love you guys so very much. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. And also have a happy Halloween. Love you guys and peace out.